We are so very excited about our next guest, Killian Murphy, the star of the blockbuster film Oppenheimer, which has earned him his first Oscar nomination. The movie has already raked in more than $900 million globally, and it's now the highest grossing biopic ever. Wow. Isn't that incredible, yeah, Gail? I yeah. Love that. yeah. Murphy stars as J. Robert Oppenheimer, known as the father of the atomic bomb. Here's a clip. What do you take it to mean? Neutrons smash into nucleus, releasing neutrons to smash into other nuclei. Criticality, a point of no return, massive explosive force. But this time, the chain reaction doesn't stop. It's what ignites the atmosphere. When we detonate an atomic device, we might start a chain reaction that destroys the world. And we're so happy to say Killian Murphy joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Also morning. so happy that it didn't destroy the world. Yes. <laughs> the chain reaction Indeed. did come to an end at some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so far, anyway. Gail said something in the green room that you've won every major acting award for playing leading a role. Leading up to this. Yeah. yeah, leading up to this moment for playing a role that Matt Damon, the brilliant Matt Damon, as General Leslie Groves uh, describes as describing Oppenheimer, a dilettante, a womanizer, <laughs> a suspected communist, unstable, theatrical, egotistical, neurotic, but also Killian, as you know, a genius who becomes death, destroyer of worlds. Yeah. How did you take on a role that was so monumental? Yes, it was huge. I, I realized it was a, a big, big part when Chris Nolan called me um, back in September 21, I think it was, he called me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I was aware of Oppenheimer. I was aware that he was the father of the atomic bomb, and I was aware of the Trinity test in 45, but everything that happened afterwards was kind of new to me, and that, that whole aspect of his life and the hearing where he lost his security clearance and all of that, and how he kind of became, you know, vilified and. American society, even though he had been this here, the most famous scientist in the world. That was the kind of Promethean aspect of the story, I suppose. Yeah, so I knew it was a huge one, and I knew I had an awful lot of work to do as quickly as I could. But you yeah. took it, you took the role without having read the script. Yeah. But you yes. said it was the most terrifying role you've ever taken. Yeah, I mean, terrifying in a good way, if that makes sense. It you does. Know, I love work that is very, very challenging and scares the life out of you because you think, how am I going to do this? It's such a huge thing to take on. That's the stuff that really gets me going rather than something that I think, yeah, I know how to do that. Uh -huh. You know, I love when it's this just the biggest challenge you could imagine. Really. But you and Chris had worked together six times. This, you, this is your sixth project together, so there must have been some comfort level to working with him. You yeah. guys must at this point have your own secret language on how well you all work together, true? Well, I think you develop a shorthand with people that you work with an awful lot, and you develop a trust, which is the most important thing you can have. You know, and there's a lot of the time, we don't really talk about it too much. It just sort of yeah. happens on set, because I feel really safe being directed by him and really secure, and you can really push yourself, and he pushes me. But how are you taking all the reaction to the movie, and to you in particular, Killian? Because there are some people, they get on stage, they go, yes, I deserve this, yes, I do. Yes, look at me, Mom. Yes, look at there me, it's, it was only a matter of time. <laughs> but yeah. for you, there is such a humility and such a grace about you, almost like you're uncomfortable with all the attention, but at the same time, you know you're very good at what you do. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, I, 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 it's just, a, it's a brilliant time for the film. None yes. of us ever anticipated that this. the film would have, yeah, this response, just critically and, you know, commercially, and that, the thing that, it, that that I get most of a kick out of is people who stop me on the street and say, man, I've seen your movie five, six, seven times. <laughs> and you, you really realize that this is a story and a film that's really profoundly connected with people. And, and you've, you know, that's very humbling. And, it, it, and, uh, and um, we're all still, still kind of in shock. In shock of a it. A little bit, yeah. But look at your, your life's path, because I, I was reading about you that even as a kid, when you... When you're on stage, it's your happy place. Yeah. You really, you, you act on instinct and you're not afraid when you're acting. I was Tell always... Tell us about your process, yeah. You well, I always... mean, I, I think that some kids are like that. You know, I always loved getting up in front of the, the adults when we were kids and at the family gatherings and playing music or all of that stuff. And it felt really kind of natural to me. And I wouldn't say I'm the most outgoing kind of gregarious person, but... That. I wouldn't say that either about you, Mr. Murphy, <laughs> yes. But, but being on stage, I, I always loved. And yeah, first always of all, it was music for me, and then yeah. it was theater, and then eventually film. So. 
There's a, I, we're all focusing on the acting. They're all very high-minded, I'm less so. Uh, there's a scene where you climb a ladder <laughs> oh, yeah. in the movie, and the wind is going crazy, and obviously no one's got a control over the wind. It's not a wind machine. Yeah. Was that scary? I mean, we're gonna show a clip of it here. Um, what, yeah. You know, the stunt director says it was harrowing for him, so. Uh -huh. I mean, it, was, it wasn't so bad going up, coming down was the part I wasn't crazy about, you know. Um, but we needed the wind to actually come up that day because that was historically what happened and it just all blew up that 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 at that precise moment where we needed it so you know i was all tied up and everything but yeah. it's still uh yeah it, it, it but that's what chris is chris does when he makes films he puts the actor in the real environment as much as he possibly mm. can always let me ask you a question for uh, the Peaky Blinders fans out oh, there, of yes. which I am one. Yeah. I know uh, that you've <laughs> said you don't want to give us, the fans, false hope. But if there was a compelling story to continue Tommy Shelby's story in a film, yeah. would you be open to doing that? I think you kind of answered the question. <laughs> like, <laughs> because it, for you, it's about the story. It's always about the story. It's always about the script. We have an amazing um, scriptwriter, Stephen Knight, who, who, who's written all 36 hours of Peaky Blinders. and. Uh, if, there's, if he feels like there's more story for, for Tommy, then I'll be there, you know? Love has, that. Has doing, playing this role, focusing on the atomic, uh, the creation of the atomic weapon, has it altered your awareness of the fact that while we're sitting here right now, mm. we're told there are atomic weapons pointing at us and we're pointing them at somebody else? Yeah, for sure. And I, and I think, you know, it seems to have ebbed and flowed since 45, you know, uh, our consciousness or awareness of it. Um, and I think it's coming back now again, but it's an awful lot for people to carry around in your head, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really That's is. sort of yeah. like that there is that sword of Damocles kind of yeah. there 24 seven. So people choose not to. We have an awful lot to get, be getting on with in our lives and be trying to get, just try to get through the, the day. Yeah. But what I like about this movie is that it's, it's a piece of entertainment uh, but it, it is provocative. Yeah, it does ask questions. Incredibly so. compelling. And I, I, I like that in film. You know? I can't wait for Oscar night. To Me see too. Me saying. too. We're Just cheering saying. you on. Putting it out there. Killian Murphy. Put it out there. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Oppenheimer is currently available to stream online. It is an incredible movie. Check it out. We'll be right back.